anyway. Okay. So looks like we are live once again this Thursday evening from sunny Abu Ghani. Let me look out again. Yes, it is sunny for a change. No, it's been brilliant. The weather's been great. So guys, welcome again to our uh, Thursday evening live show. And uh, what a brilliant, what brilliant times we've had every week. Last week we had Kath and Di Woolrich. Uh, Phil, you will remember Kath and yeah. absolutely fantastic. And this evening, it's my pleasure, my privilege to welcome Phil Jones all the way from Canada. Uh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And for some of you who may not know Phil, I've shared, shared uh, you know, a little bit about Phil. But Phil connected with us uh, in very unusual circumstances. <laughs> we had a call one morning in our office from Phil, uh, and he, he said God gave him a couple of dreams about Abu Ghani, and that, that's how our relationship began. And not only was uh, that a call, but there was uh, you know, a visit from Phil uh, twice, once just after that call. Uh, and then he came with his lovely wife, Steph, uh, and spent an evening with all our leaders. And uh, though we're so far away and don't you know, get a chance to connect as often, but there is that bonding. And so in this season, when we've been you know, processing all that's happening, in my heart, I knew I had to you know, connect with Phil. And interestingly, he sent an email uh, as well. And so that was it. We knew we had to come together and bring God's, you know, word to us uh, in in this season. So Phil, welcome to Abu Ghani once again. I know it's Thank digital. You. Uh, welcome to Gateway. First of all, tell us how have you guys been? A little bit of what's happening in your neck of the woods in Canada. Well, um, just to say to folks that uh, we live in uh, a place called Canmore, which is in the, the Rocky Mountains in Canada. We live in the highest city in Canada, so it's got sort of all sorts of spiritual significance. Um, but I was just saying to Chris before, before we came online, really, that um, we've been a bit cosseted during this uh, pandemic, uh, for want of a better word. And uh, Fortunately, we've been surrounded by beauty. Uh, we've been able to go out a little bit uh, in the surrounding area, which is so beautiful. And uh, so although we have had some of the restrictions that everybody else has had, it hasn't felt quite as bad as some terrible things that other folks have been going through. But uh, in the midst of it, in the midst of being hidden away, uh, as I'm sure you all have experienced, the Lord has come very close and uh, been speaking to us quite a bit uh, about his heart. And uh, my wife and I have had lots of opportunities just to spend, you know, praying and talking and processing and, uh, and all the rest of it, uh, praying for others, praying for ourselves. Um, and I think the thing that we've missed, I suppose, our, our suffering most of all, which uh, uh, is significant to us, but probably in the big scheme of things, not too bad, is that we haven't been able to uh, you know, go and hug our grandkids. And uh, that's been quite a difficult thing. We've got three, we've got seven grandkids altogether, but only three in, uh, in Canada. So they live um, probably about 40 minutes away, but uh, to see them just at a distance or online is quite difficult because we're a very sort of touchy, feely family and uh, not to have the hugs and things like that has been, that's been a difficult thing. And um had to process that really what the, what is the lord saying perhaps about touch and the importance of touch when we get back together again you know mm. oh brilliant brilliant so phil tell us some of the things that you believe the lord's been specifically laying on your heart in the season it's a global it's it's a global scenario unprecedented as as we all know so anything significant that's been on your heart in these last few weeks I think um, it's interesting, you know, what the Lord does is that we we don't always know what's coming. So obviously none of us knew this was coming. You know, I think there were a few prophetic words um, about something happening, but we weren't quite sure what it looked like or what it would, how it would affect us. And uh, at the beginning of 2019 uh, in January, I, I woke up one morning and the Lord 
uh, spoke to me, uh, as he does often as I'm waking, spoke to me a word, and the word was reimagine. And um, it was, it was, it's not really a word that I would be uh, using that much. And yeah. so I thought, well, I better just check it out, you know, and, uh, and see what I feel it really means, you know. And um, I think what I came to the conclusion after looking at different things, it means to be willing to uh, see an, a different alternative, you know, to uh, the future or to a difficulty or to whatever we, uh, we're going through. And um, as I just meditated on that word, that word came at me uh, and the Lord often does that, as we know, he repeats it and repeats it. And uh, so one of the examples was I was working at the airport uh, as a chaplain and uh, the, the, the sort of, I think it was two or three days after I'd got this word, it suddenly appeared full life size on a, on a new mural at the airport. And it had, it, this must have been about 10, 11 feet high, reimagined in massive words. And it, and it wasn't there before. They'd just done it. So, you know, the Lord was saying, no, come on now, pay attention. And it, and it came at me in all sorts of other ways as well, which I won't, won't go into now. But I, what I did was I um, just began to meditate on it, you know, and, and process it. And I don't know how this came about, but I suddenly stumbled across the metamorphosis of the butterfly. Now, I'm sure we all get taught that at school. And, you know, I, I've, I know that I know, I thought I knew about the metamorphosis of the butterfly. But what I discovered was something that I didn't know. Um, so obviously you get the, the egg and then it becomes the caterpillar and it sort of eats and eats and eats until it's so large it can't eat anymore, hangs upside down on a leaf, forms a chrysalis. And inside that chrysalis, uh, the change begins to happen and everything sort of turns to goo inside of there. Now, this is the part that I uh, didn't know. And I, when I read it, I nearly leapt out of my skin because it says, as I was reading, it says, during this process, imaginal cells develop. Wow. And I, went, I thought, I've never heard of that before. I've yeah. never heard of imaginal cells. And so apparently, and this was a genuine thing, and I, I looked it up again and again, and it, that, true enough, it's a real thing. Imaginal cells. Right. Imaginal cells develop in the goo, and they are the cells that will uh, produce and form the butterfly. But, so listen to this, but the old cells that are dying off fight the new cells. And so what the new cells do is they cluster together and it eventually those imaginal cells overpower the old cells of the, butter, of the caterpillar and the butterfly begins to form. And then just the, just the day before the butterfly emerges, the chrysalis actually goes completely transparent. So now you can see inside what's being formed. And then the butterfly takes a deep breath and the chrysalis splits open. And then it has to, it is a real struggle to, to get out. And in the struggle, blood is pumped to the wings of the butterfly. If the struggle didn't take place, mm. then the butterfly would die. Some people have actually tried helping the butterfly out by cutting open the chrysalis and the butterfly has died. So obviously there's a, a real, yeah, um, emerging that I think I, I, I've been so, I just said to you, Chris, beforehand, yeah. there's an emerging that's taking place, I believe. Yes. But uh, we have to, I think, reimagine what this will look like. If you've been a caterpillar, yeah. it's difficult to imagine being a butterfly. Yeah. But the transformation taking place which I believe is so radical that we won't hardly be able to recognize ourselves, i.e. the church, yes. the sons of God, 
whatever you want to call it. I think it's going to be so massive. And I think that this whole um, lockdown has been part of that and is part of that. It's not the whole of it, but it's part of it because it's caused people to be hidden away, if you like, in a chrysalis and caused them to rethink, yeah. reimagine. Will it ever be the same again? If it's not, what will I do? Um, some people have thought about their mortality, you yeah. know, uh, what if I die? What about my family? Blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. Very important things. So yeah. it's caused us to reimagine what it will be like when we emerge, when we come out. And uh, the world will never be the same again, yeah. but it will be something different and something new. And what will we look like in that? What will be our part in this new era? So I just want to uh, read you a, a quote, one of my favorite quotes. It's from a, a man called Walter Brueggemann. And uh, it's, he wrote a book called The Prophetic Imagination. So this is what it says. It says, it's the vocation of the prophet to keep alive the ministry of imagination to keep on conjuring and proposing alternative futures to the single one the king, i.e. the powers of the status quo, wants to urge as the only thinkable one. Wow. So it's a powerful, can I just read that again? So you yeah. might miss it. It's yeah. the vocation of the prophet to keep alive the ministry of imagination, to keep on conjuring and proposing alternative futures to the single one the king i.e the powers of the status quo wants to urge as the only thinkable one it's a powerful quote walter brueggemann is the name of the guy and um so i feel like the status quo or you know the powers that be yeah I'm not trying to criticize what they've done or anything like that. But in this time, they say, well, if we're going to come out of this, this is what we have to do. Now, this is just in this situation. But the enemy, and I'm not saying the government's the enemy, the enemy wants to keep us in a place of spiritual lockdown so we don't emerge. And he wants to keep us in a place of status quo. And so the thing that I feel is, that God is having to give us mm. a renewed eternal perspective, not a temporal perspective, but an, et an eternal perspective. So we are in part of our reimagining. Yes. We have to gain an eternal perspective. We have to think from heaven, not think about going to heaven, but think from eternity. Right how to impact the earth. Now, for some people that's not a new uh, thing, but I think sometimes we lose it and it needs to be restored to us. Yes. So, and part of that is the kingdom of God. Now, not just church, yes. uh, I'm, I'm for church, don't get me wrong, yeah. but the kingdom of God yes. is in a, Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world. That's right. It comes from a different place. It comes from a supernatural place. It comes from an eternal place. And we need to enter into a more eternal perspective that, you know, there's a day coming, the Bible says, when God says, when Jesus comes again, all things will be made new. So it's not just about dying, going to heaven. Yes. It's about there's a kingdom that is coming and one day will come in its fullness. It's an eternal kingdom and everything will be made new. So I'd like to recommend a book that Steph and I worked through during this time. Okay. And it's called All Things New by John Eldridge. All Things New by John Eldridge. It says, all things new, heaven, earth, and the restoration of everything you love brilliant so, so it's a bit i just want to recommend that steph and i worked through it prayed through it and it was so encouraging as a restoration of an eternal perspective about what god is 
is really up to. Um, so I just, I'll leave that with yeah. you, but it, going back to the reimagining, you know, and with the butterfly, um, that reimagining came in 2019. Now, just recently, um, the Lord uh, showed me about the monarch butterfly. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the monarch butterfly. It's called the king of butterflies. Yeah. And uh, it goes through um, four generations. And the fourth generation travels over 2,000 miles from Canada and uh and America right down to Mexico. It's an amazing journey. So if you want to look into it, yeah. but I, one of the words that I felt was God is saying, the monarchs are emerging. Wow. The, the, the kings are emerging uh, and the sons of God are emerging. We know that in Romans eight, don't we? It says yes. the creation is waiting yeah. in great, in, on, it's, and the word means on tiptoe, yeah. just peering, waiting to see the sons of God emerge. And of course, if you're a son of God, you're a king, you're, you know, and that's not to be presumptuous. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And because we have to learn how to rule and reign from an eternal perspective with the love of God and all that pertains to that. So um, I just want to read you something from Zechariah chapter 10. If I can do that. Is that okay? Yep. yep. So I won't read all of it, but this is something that I've been living in now for yeah. a few years, and it's really been life to me. Uh, Zechariah chapter 10, it says, ask the Lord for rain in the springtime. It is the Lord who makes storm clouds. He gives showers of rain to men and plants of the field to everyone. The idols speak deceit. Yeah. Diviners see visions that lie. They tell dreams that are false. They give comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wander like sheep oppressed for lack of a shepherd. My anger burns against the shepherds and I will punish the leaders. For the Lord Almighty will care for his flock, the house of Judah, and make them like a proud or a majestic horse in battle. From Judah will come the cornerstone, from him the tent peg, from him the battle bow, from him every ruler. Together they will be like mighty men, trampling the muddy streets in battle. Because the Lord is with them, they will fight and overthrow the horsemen. Mm. So it's quite an, a, a powerful, yes. there's, there's, more, there's more after that, but that, just to yeah. focus on that little bit. Yes. I believe that we're in the time before Jesus comes again. Jesus is coming again. Yeah. And I, one of the things that we don't hear preached that often in church is that Jesus is coming again. That causes an eternal perspective to hit us if, if we preach that. So we hear Jesus was born, Jesus lived with us, Jesus died, Jesus rose again. But not often, and yeah. I'm not saying it happens, but not often do we hear Jesus is coming again. That gives an eternal perspective because he's coming again to do something. He's coming to establish the kingdom. So I believe we're in the time of what they call the latter rain. Yeah. So it's the rain that comes just before the harvest. So I do believe that we need to be, as it said there, calling on God, Lord, yeah. send latter rain, the Holy Spirit to drench us so that we can have the laborers for this great harvest that is that is coming i believe that's what's happening amen I'll, and it yes. sorry chris go ahead no i'll, I'll come I, I i was just making notes of some of the key words and phrases uh you've been using phil this evening and it's absolutely and just for the for our viewers you know just some of the things that you've been saying so far uh of course the imaginal cells is what you started with uh, and in this god is creating and emerging there is an emerging uh, that is happening you know uh, the eternal perspective from which we need to begin to operate from uh, seeing things from a from a from an eternal perspective rather than 
you know, where we are at this point of time. I love the illustration of the monarch and speaks of kings, you know, and these are yeah. the kings of God going to emerge. Just taking a few terms. Kingdom of God, it's interesting that this year we began the year at our church on, on a series through the year on the kingdom. Right. And that's the confirmation that God is speaking about the kingdom, you know, and there's so many elements and dimensions of the kingdom that we need to get a fresh revelation of. You know, kingdom mindset, kingdom authority, uh, kingdom rule and reign, kingdom provision, kingdom supernatural, you know. Amen, yeah. And things like that. So uh, one of the, of course, I, I'll open it up to our audience, you know, to ask any queries that they might have. But there's one, one thing that if you could highlight on, uh, Phil, in terms of uh, reimagining, in terms of having an, an eternal perspective, is there a framework from which we could operate from in this season to develop that? So what if someone watching says, wow, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Where do I start? How do I, how do I develop that eternal perspective? Is there a framework that I can operate from? Well, I just, uh, number one, I think that the, uh, the whole thing, the whole sense that Jesus is coming again, yes. number one, yeah. that there's, it's got such implications to that. Jesus is coming. Why is he coming? What's he coming for? You know, again, he said he was coming. He's co I believe he's coming soon, whatever soon means, you know, in our terms. Um, but there's a preparation that we need to make for him to come. We can actually hasten the day of his coming, it says. Uh, I wanted to say in that Zechariah, and this might give a, a little bit of a framework. Yeah. Um, it goes on to say that, you know, the idols are lying. You know, there are prophets out there that are, spe you know, uh, speaking deceit and lies. One of the biggest things we need is discernment of what is truth and what is lies because there's so much comes at us yeah. over the media now the lord is making it clear he says I, i'm so fed up with what's going on i'm so angry with leadership um not all leadership but certain leadership whether it's countries or nations or whether it's uh some in the church some in the kingdom of god yeah. and don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not having a go here i'm just saying yeah yeah you know, there are there are some things that are going on that are not good yeah and the lord says he said there i am going to take over i am going to come Amen. and i'm a change i'm going to do another transformation so if you reimagine this he's going to change his yeah. people from sheep to a beautiful majestic actually it says his ma beautiful majestic horse in battle which i think is quite important not mm -hmm. a but his majestic horse in battle. So that's a massive yes. transformation. So I, I, what I say is, and I, again, don't think I'm knocking pastors or anything, I'm not, but sheep have carers, horses have trainers. Yeah. So there's a framework there. I think for many churches, the Lord will call them to change their framework to not that we shouldn't care i'm not saying that or not that there's not a time to be a sheep but to know that we're not destined to be sheep we're yeah. destined to be kings and the and the and his majestic horse is a beautiful white horse that he comes yeah. back on this is and so powerful. the what the white horse yes all speaks of kingship so if you look through history or if you look in the bible the, the kings would always ride in the parade on a white horse. Yes. So I'm talking about a framework that is needed to develop kings, not sheep. So you, to develop a king, you can't just be a carer. Yes. You have to be a trainer. Obviously, you've got to care. That's inherent. But you have to be a trainer. And that means... That, that you have to put things in place yes. whereby people have to learn, test, overcome, you know, learn how to, how, how to do that. 
The other thing is typically, and I know this is not always the case, typically there's a lot of sheep to take care of. But when you're talking about horses, to train a horse, you can only train a limited number at a time. So you could probably uh, train about two or three horses if you're going to do it properly at a time. So the framework changes now. So instead of, um, you know, the big thing where we announce everything from the front and, you know, blah, 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 um, the framework changes to a more discipleship model, which yes. is the model of Jesus. Absolutely. You know, he, he didn't do the big stand, you know, obviously he had crowds around him, but yes. he trained yeah. a limited number of men. Now, if Jesus could only train a few men and do a good job, then I think it says something to us, you know? So there's that whole thing about how do we train a king? What does that look like? How do we train somebody to learn to have authority? How do we tra train somebody to have power and not to be, a, a, not to be abusing it? You yeah. know, uh, yeah. one of the things that I think is an answer to that yeah. is King David. Right. Now, King David wasn't a perfect guy, but he was a man with a heart after God. And what happened to him was uh, he, be, he ha had to go against Saul. It says there was, a, uh, there was a war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Saul did things in a certain way. David did things in another way. And eventually David's kingship won out. It says Saul decreased, David increased. Yeah. So to look at how David trained his men is quite interesting. So he was a very hands-on trainer. So he didn't just send his men off to war. He went to war with them and fought alongside them and yeah. trained with them and was very, very hands-on. And he had the, the mighty men, the gibberim. Mm -hmm. And it says they gave David strong support to extend his kingship over the whole land. Wow, what a fantastic phrase, you know? Yes. Why did they do that? Well, I think it's in 1, uh, 1 Chronicles 11, I think it is, where David is, was uh, anointed king. The people said to him, when Saul was king, you were the one that fought for us. So that's interesting. When Saul was king, you were the one that fought for us. You were the one that bled for us. You were the one that stood alongside us. Yes. And we want you to rule over us. Well, who wouldn't want somebody like that to rule over you? So there's a different framework here where we have to, as leaders, um, get alongside those up and coming kings or uh, sons of God. And we have to be guardians to them, but trainers yes. so that they can come forth in all that they need to for this time Amen. and uh, yeah. i think it's such an exciting time we it's training for reigning Amen. that's what it's about. training for reigning and it needs men of a different spirit you know joshua and caleb it was moses the shepherd that led the people out and met all their needs yeah. but joshua the warrior led them in to get the promises he had to train them how to fight and they weren't keen but they had to learn how to do it you know and to yeah. overcome so all sorts of stories yes. like like that. So that I don't know whether that answers oh, your question about a slightly different framework that we need to be reimagining. You know, it is absolutely. In fact, I'm I'm glad that these programs stay on our website because the content that we have received in this short span of time, uh, Phil, we need to we need to process it, uh, listen to it again. Absolutely super and i believe word in season you know if, if we have any leaders out there i like that brilliant illustration sheep have carers but it's horses who need trainers and god is definitely now challenging his church uh not to stop caring but it's not a place yeah there's a horse there <laughs> it it's it's not a place just for caring sheep indefinitely uh you know till jesus comes but to raise up god's people into the into the kings into the warriors into the horses that he's already designed for them to be and that means a paradigm shift 
in how we do church. It's a paradigm shift yeah. in, in what people view church as, both in terms of the leaders as well as the ones who come to church so that they recognize I've got a destiny. I'm not just a member to, you know, attend Absolutely. and become a part of, but there's a calling. And as you rightly said, you know, the number, the numbers uh, si signify what we do because, you know, Jesus' model was he met in the temple, but he also met in the home. Uh, in the early church, they met in the temple, but they also met in the homes because that's where the real discipling, the smaller groups, the one-on-ones, you know, uh, doing life together, that's where people can really be trained and discipled. Can I throw one question in? I know we're running out of time. We've just got about five kind of minutes left. Do you think there is a sifting coming? Uh, sorry, uh, what, sorry, coming? A sifting. Sifting? A sifting. Uh, of, of, of uh, what? Now, because of the way church might change uh, in the way it, it, you know, it operates more from a kingdom perspective, do you think there will be a falling away? Do you think there will be, or do you think, uh, what do you think? I think that God is definitely refining. Right. And uh, I think that um, the gray areas are disappearing. Yeah. And it's becoming much more black and white. And the cost, I think, uh, I think we're going to face persecution. I don't yeah. want to, but I think we will. And I think the cost of really emerging as kings and sons of God um, means no compromise. And we're going to have to be much clearer in uh, standing for what we believe and speaking it and paying a price for it than ever before. So I suppose inherent in that is that there will be those who rise to the occasion by the grace of God and those who won't. No judgment in that. I'm just saying, I'm just praying I will rise. Um, but, you know, by the grace of God alone. So I think there will be a sifting. But I think um, we need to. The, the one thing that Steph and I have been praying is in this restoration. Um, one of the things that the government said over here to people who were out of the country at one time, they said, come home from your foreign country before right. our borders are closed. And it suddenly struck me that the Lord is saying to those who've gone away to a foreign country that have known the Lord before, you know, prodigal sons, if you like, that the Lord is saying, come home before it's too late yeah. and so there may be a sifting and a falling away but i do feel there's going to be a coming home a coming back and we need to pray for those that we know that at once we're walking with the lord but then have gone to a foreign country we need to call them home come home before it's before the borders are closed to the kingdom you know so i think yes sifting but yes, returning home. As well. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that, you know, in this moment of time. If you're watching us this evening, perhaps there's a word there for you right now where the Lord is saying, come back home. Come back home. Deep in your heart, perhaps in the last Amen. few weeks, you've been processing this stuff. You know, what, what's this Christian faith all about? And, you know, maybe in your childhood, you may have, uh, known the Lord, maybe you, you know, heard about the Lord in your teenage years, and maybe with circumstances of life, you just, you know, just let it drift by. Who knows? In this lockdown period, God is causing you to think again Amen. about your soul. You know, one of the verses I always quote uh, that touched me as a young man: "What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul?" It, it's more than anything, it's, it's God prompting and saying, I've got, I've got bigger things for you. Think about your soul. You know, don't, in, 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 in all that's happening around you, perhaps there's an opportunity now to think about the inner, inner person. You know, the true, the, true, the, the true person 
who you are living in this tent that one day will, you know, we will all die and go, but it's our souls that God is interested in to give us eternal life. And Amen. so give us a thought and give us a call. Maybe you want to talk to us, you know, get hold of our number uh, from our website, send us a message. We'll be delighted to share with you. What is this, you know, uh, born again experience that we talk about what is this about our soul being saved uh, that we're talking about and also all the other stuff that you might hear on on programs like these god's called you to be a king god's called you to have a, a, a great plan and a destiny for your life and 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 perhaps this is an opportunity for you to find out a little bit more phil it's been an absolute amazing evening and I, I think we may bring you back at some point to, to <laughs> play a second round with us. But the but the but the stuff has been prophetic. Uh, it's been in season, and I, and I believe for us not just to hear now, but to go back, process it, and and use the next few weeks to to realign, you know, to allow God to bring those, uh, you know, new things to surface and emerge as as we come out of the season. Can I ask you to pray for all our viewers before I let you go, Phil. And yeah, that'd be a pleasure. Uh, my, may I just add one thing? Yes. Is yeah. it with you? Yes. Um, one of the things that we've been praying about is the children. Uh, sometimes we think about an emerging generation as the next generation, but I feel the Lord is saying it's the, ge the generation beyond that as well. Mm. And there's story in the bible of a, th a lady called Italia and she was Jezebel's daughter and she usurped the throne yes. and she started to kill off all the royal children and uh and I feel like the enemy is trying to do that there are children that have great great destinies yeah great and as parents as grandparents I think grandparents need to be guardians of that generation as well and one child in that story was hidden away and he was hidden away in the temple of the lord and seven years later he was brought out and crowned king and she was deposed and she was trampled underfoot mm. uh, in the horse gate which is quite interesting you know horses again um but um i feel like we need to hide our kids away in the presence of the Lord so that they will eventually emerge and be crowned kings. Yes. So I just wanted to add that in there, but I, I, I'll pray now. Father, we, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for the folks that have been listening. Thank you for the privilege of being able to share your word. Thank you for what you're, thank you for what you are doing. At this time, Lord, you're doing some amazing things. I've heard some amazing testimonies. And Lord, we offer ourselves to be trained as kings. We offer ourselves to yield our ways to you so that you can tr uh, transform us from sheep to majestic, beautiful, your majestic, beautiful horse in battle so that we can carry you, Lord, that wherever you go, there the kingdom is. There the kingdom is established. Yes. Lord, cause us to rethink, to reimagine, to dream again. And Lord, to dream big and to reimagine big, not just, just to hold in because we think times are restricting. But Lord, nothing is restricting you. There are no boundaries for you. Yeah. And so, Lord, help us to visualize big, to imagine big, to dream big so that we can come out of this with a, a sense of great destiny and purpose for the kingdom of God. So I commit all these people to you now, Lord. I thank you for them. Thank you for the kings that are amongst them yeah. and pray your blessing upon them now in Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed, be blessed. Come forth and emerge into your destiny now in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hey, receive that word. God has great things ahead. Things are going to unfurl and you have an opportunity and I have an opportunity to be partakers of this. So, Phil, thank you again for that wonderful word and for the time that you've given us. God willing, uh, we'll have you back with us again. In the meantime, love to the family. 
uh, Thank you. from all of us here in Abu Ghani. Uh, and God willing, have you here in person some day soon as well. That'd be wonderful. All Thanks, right. Chris. Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye-bye.